Hello everyone, my name is Victoria and I'm your Union Resident. We're here today to talk to you a little bit about Housing Week. Now, Housing Week is something that we do at the Union to talk about issues that students face with housing, as well as any housing experiences or questions that you might have around accommodation. Now, from your first year to the end of your university experience, our Advice Centre is here to ensure that you're getting the most out of your housing experience. And a fun fact that you should know is that according to the NUS Homes Fit for Study survey, more than half of renters are spending more than 75% of their monthly income on housing costs. What a fact. Now, I'm here with Liam, who is the manager of our Advice Centre, to ask those big questions that we're all thinking. Hi Liam, thank you for coming today. Hi Vic, hello everyone. So my first question to you is, when realistically should students start looking for accommodation for next year? Well, I think we'd say don't rush. So we think that um, starting to look now is too early, but realistically we know that landlords and agents will start asking, they'll start adding their properties for next year. So that's why we think it's important to get the information out there in terms of what students should look for and sorts of things, um, pitfalls they should look out for and that sort of thing. But I think the reason why we say don't rush is because um, there is plenty of accommodation. People start, once they hear that maybe a friend has got somewhere to live, they start thinking, oh, well, the best places will go. I won't have much choice left if I leave. If that's not true. Um, there's more than enough housing in Birmingham and um, we would say take your time, um, choose your housemates wisely, uh, particularly for first years, you've probably only known them at a very short period. So do you really know what they'd be like to live with? Um, you know, hopefully you won't, but you know, there's a chance you might fall out with them before it's a long, long way off um, next September. So, uh, and the other thing is, that once you've signed up to a contract, it's legally binding, it's very difficult to get out of. So yeah, take your time, don't rush. Brilliant advice there. Um, and now my next question is, where would you say would be the best place to look? Okay, I might be a bit biased, but I would say um, start with the uh, Student Union's own letting agents so Birmingham City Student Homes. Um, they've got you know, a range of different accommodation in different areas and probably importantly for different budgets as well. So, um, so yeah, start with them, but also have a look. We we signed up um, to the Midland Landlord Accreditation Scheme. So both the university and the student union would only recommend that you go with accredited landlords and agents. Um, the best place is to look on their website. So say it's Midland landlord accreditation scheme thing that you and there's a list on there of accredited landlords and accredited agents uh, it just means that it's a way of maybe picking out um, the ones that have um, signed up to sort of protect your rights and also there's a, a really good sort of complaints process if anything does go wrong so yeah try that um, other than that I would say ask around current tenants are, will give you the best recommendation. They'll give you an honest appraisal of, of what a property is like, what a landlord's like, what an agent's like. So that is sort of the best, um, the best information you can get is current tenants. Um, and then finally, yeah, have a look online. So um, there are reviews of various agents online as well. So yeah, there's lots of stuff out there. Yeah, I found reviews very useful. Uh, I've steered clear of many uh, just through reviews, so that's really good. Um, and also our Birmingham City Students Homes is, is one of the best places to go to. I've seeked them for support as well, unbiasedly when I was a student. Uh, so <laughs> next question would be, uh, what should students consider before they start doing their search? Okay, so in order to, you know, to, to avoid wasting their time yeah, it's, there's, there's some things which they really need to seriously think about so one's really obvious which is 
the number. So how many is going to be in their group? Because, um, yeah, obviously, you know, you need to really nailed it down. So it, you might have a loose group of three, four, five, whatever. But, you know, are those people all, all really serious about it? Have they got the other things in place in terms of have they got guarantors? Have they got can they afford it? So, yeah, the number that you're looking for is going to determine you know what sort of places you're looking for so make sure you're really confident about um, what size of property is that you're looking for um and another obvious one is obviously the type so do you want to do you want to stay in halls type accommodation obviously lots of private providers or do you want a sort of traditional uh, house share again which there's lots out there or something like maybe a flat uh, or apartment for just yourself or maybe for two of you that does tend to work out more expensive. So just bear that in mind. The other thing is budget. So do a budget. We can we can help with that, but really make sure. I mean, obviously you quoted before um, that fact about how much accommodation costs. It's a massive part of a student's budget. So you need to make sure you can afford it. We do get lots of students who sign up to contracts and then later on come back to us and say, oh, you know, I didn't realise that it was going to be quite so difficult to afford it, particularly at the moment with part time work, you know, more difficult to get and stuff like that. So, yeah, do your budget. Um, also, um, other costs like you will be asked for uh, to pay money like rent in advance, deposit up front, those sorts of things. There's lots of things to consider um, in terms of money wise. Um, and then I suppose the other thing is Again, an obvious one, what areas do you want to live in? So do you know Birmingham that well? Um, there are some traditional student areas. But yeah, the more you can narrow it down beforehand, it will probably save you a lot of a lot of time. Yeah, and um, what would you say is the situation on guarantors? Because I know for different students, it can be very different. It can be. I mean, not everyone asks for a guarantor, uh, but if they do, um, that will normally be sort of a friend or a relative. They'll want to, you to um, get them to sign a guarantor agreement. So if anything if, um, happened in terms of you not being able to afford the rent, it, they can then ask that guarantor for the rent. But there are some students who find it more difficult, like international students, to get, um, to get a guarantor because quite often it needs to be someone who's in the UK. Um, but there are guarantor schemes, there's one off the top of my head called Helping Hand um, that can help out if you need a guarantor and you can't find someone to do that. But if you get stuck again, just contact the advice centre and we'll, we'll sort that out. Brilliant, yeah, that's, uh, that's really good. And I think also one other thing that um, I would personally recommend in that front would be uh, your commute, because I've lived in yeah areas of Birmingham and the commute is always very different. Um, so my penultimate question is, um, do you have any other house hunting tips? Glad you asked me that because I do. Um, so one of them is it's about getting promises in writing. I think that um, landlords and agents can be very charming when you're looking for somewhere and they can promise all sorts about, oh, this will be decorated, there'll be new furniture. If those sorts of things are going to be the difficult, the difference between you accepting a property or not, then get it in writing. You know, landlords and agents insist on you signing up to things, contracts and things like that. So, yeah, don't be scared of asking for some for them to put something in writing to make sure it's it's more watertight. Um, the other thing that's on a similar note really is about getting receipts. So you're going to have to pay out lots of money for lots of different things. Um, always make sure you've got a receipt. Um, understand your contract. So I've mentioned before, it's legally binding, very difficult to get out of. So um, you, know, you, well, I don't expect most students to have sort of read um, through tenancy agreements. So uh, and, and understand all the clauses can be quite complicated. So if there's anything um, you want us to check in a contract or just read the whole thing for you, again, get in contact with the advice and we'll um, read through it for you. Another tip 
is um, about going to see in the evening. So um, obviously mainly people go during the day and an area can feel very different when it's sort of light and sunny or whatever. But go at night and get a feel, you know, how does, what does that street feel like? What does the area feel like? Um, it can feel quite different of an evening. And I suppose the final one is um, make sure your deposit is protected. That is the law. So if you pay over a deposit, um, it needs to go into a deposit protection scheme. So make sure that's been done. They have to um, give you details of the scheme that it's been put in. Mm. Yeah, no, those are all really, really great tips. And I think actually as a student, I didn't do that visit at night and I ended up living in an area that wasn't so great at night. So definitely something yeah. that um, students should do. Uh, just on the back of that, do you have any advice actually when students are moving in to the property? OK, yeah, so for most that will be a long way down the line. But just I suppose a couple of things um, are, are taking photos when you move in. So you've got proof as to the condition of the property and any furniture. Um, and also there's something called an inventory, which is basically a list of, again, all the belongings and, and the condition of the property. Um, not all landlords and agents do an inventory, but a lot do. It can be very easy. You feel pressured. You just sign it. And, but no, go through that really carefully if the condition of anything, any part of the property or any furniture is not as listed on the inventory, make sure that that's noted. Saying all those things because that that will really help you when you come to the end to get your deposit back. A deposit is a big chunk of money. Landlords and agents um, quite often find reasons to keep bits of that money. So um, the more proof you've got, of the condition when you moved in, the more chance you've got of getting your deposit back. So yeah, think about that. Mm -hmm. Those are all really, really great uh, tips for when moving in. Uh, taking the photos is such an important one. Really important one. There are lots, lots of... Yeah, there are lots more tips, but I don't, I, you know, I don't want to go too over the board with, with stuff about moving in because it's so far away. But there yeah. is stuff on our website and also in the housing magazine, which we'll send out to students, which goes into more detail about moving in. That's really good. And then just lastly, actually, is my last question for you. What other housing issues can the Advice Centre help with? OK, so it's really the whole journey. So we've talked about sort of stuff with moving in, but also once you're in your accommodation, if you have any sort of disputes with the landlord, um, Repairs is quite a common one, um, so it might be that something breaks and the landlord is really slow or says that they don't need to you know, repair it or replace it. That's probably not true. Come to us and we'll give you advice on that. Um, hopefully everything will go smoothly in terms of the other people you choose to live with, but occasionally tenants drop out um, and leave the property and um, depending on the type of agreement you've got, so it's common to have what's called a joint agreement, then um, you or the individual tenant might need to find a replacement. We can advise you on that, the places where to um, where to advertise uh, and yeah, hopefully secure another tenant and not have to pay additional rent. And then finally, as I already mentioned, deposit refund. Hopefully that will go smoothly and you'll get the deposit back. But if you find you don't, come to us and, and we'll, we'll help you with that process. Awesome. Thanks. The uh, answers to the questions were absolutely brilliant um, and really on the ball. I think just to summarise very really quickly, you know, we do at the Student Union have a brilliant advice centre and, and Liam up as the, as the manager and, you know, Liam, you've, um, you've spoken there about uh, not only Birmingham City Student Homes, which is um, our uh, a property agency but also you know those really important things about deposits guarantors uh, making sure that you know you keep a track of your entire process from start to finish um, when you are looking at accommodation and, and that housing experience so thank you so much um, now students if you do need any more help with housing issues you can log an inquiry uh, with Liam and his team 
through b2su.com forward slash advice. Thank you so much for coming to this video and Liam again, thank you so much. Cheers. Bye. Brilliant.